Alright, so look, look at this problem. <clears throat> the cylinder in the middle shown, it rolls without slipping uh, between two moving plates E and D. Determine the angular velocity of the cylinder and the velocity of its center C. So, this cylinder is not in pure rotation. It, it is not rotating about point C. Point C is not the center of rotation. <clears throat> I'm not sure where the center of rotation is. Well, let's let's figure that out. Uh, and so I want to use the instantaneous center of zero velocity method uh, to find um, the angular velocity. So <clears throat> if these are rolling without slipping, we kind of talked about this, then wouldn't you agree that point A would have the same velocity, uh, 0.25 meters per second right here, as the uh, plate? And also point B would have the same velocity right here of 0.4. Alright, so for the instantaneous center zero velocity method, draw those velocity vectors, then draw dotted lines that are perpendicular to the velocity. So perpendicular to this B would be right here, perpendicular to this A would be right here. Now, where they intersect is the instantaneous center. We've got a problem here. They overlap. I mean, they, they overlap everywhere. They intersect everywhere. Okay, well, you do have an instantaneous center, and it's somewhere on that that intersection, on that line. So uh, they didn't really help me out. We're going to have to figure that out. It is somewhere, and it's somewhere on those lines. Uh, well, okay. Well, let me just uh, do, do what I can, do what I do know. I know that VA equals RA omega of, I'll say, ABC. Um, and I know that VB equals RB <coughs> omega ABC. Um, I know VA and VB. And so my problem here is I have two equations, but I've got three unknowns. Two equations, three unknowns. My three unknowns... I don't know RA, the distance that A is from the instantaneous center. I don't know the distance B is from the instantaneous center. And I don't know the distance or the angular velocity of omega ABC. Now, where do you think the instantaneous center is going to be? Where do you think the instantaneous center is going to be? It, it's going to be somewhere, maybe it's going to be somewhere on this dotted line. If you've got a point up here that is going to the right and a point down here that's going to the left, does it make sense that your instantaneous center, the center of rotation, would be in between the two? So, somewhere, somewhere in between the two right here. Right? <clears throat> because, you know, think about a disc that's just spinning. You know, something on the bottom going to the left, something on the top going to the right, the center is in between the two. Do you think it's right at there at the middle? If it's right there at the middle, th these would not be different values, right? If it's right here at the middle, then the point would be point the top would be 0.25 and the bottom would be 0.25. Then yes, it would be at the middle. But if the top is 0.25 and the bottom is 0.4, and I know that the farther away you are from the center of rotation, the larger the um, the larger the uh, velocity then would it make sense that the center of rotation would be closer to the smaller velocity and further away from the larger velocity? Yeah, yeah. And so this is what it is. So I still don't exactly know where it is, but let me call this RB and this RA. I've got... Two equations, three unknowns. Is there one other equation? What's our other equation that we can use? What's our other equation we can use with RA, RB? Do you know anything about RA and RB? From the figure, I would say that I, I, I don't know RA, I don't know RB, but I do know that if it's in between here, their distances are going to add up to the diameter. Radius is 0.125. They're going to add up to 0.25. <clears throat> right? They're going to add up to 0.25. So now I have three equations, three unknowns. So <clears throat> if you have a 
time where those radial lines intersect, if you have a time those radial lines intersect, then maybe the RA and the RB add up to something, you can tell from the figure. Maybe they are off, maybe they subtract to something uh, from the figure. Um, so in this case, they add up to it. That's my third equation. So I, I, how do you like to solve three equations, three unknowns? I would say RA is 0.25 minus RB. Plug that in right there. And then we have uh, two equations, two unknowns. So let's do a little bit of this math. 0.25 equals 0.25 minus RB omega, and then 0.4 equals um, RB omega AB. Uh, then just do some math over here. Uh, RB is 0.4 over. Plug that in up here. Eventually, a little, little bit a little bit of math. Eventually, this you can solve for all three of these. Ra <clears throat> Rb 0.1538. Does that make sense? Right there. Just make sure that is logical and that makes sense. That Ra would be smaller than Rb. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and omega of that disk. 2.6 radians per second. I've got to give it a direction myself, and from the uh, figure, if it is centered right here, and the top's going to the right, bottom's going to the left, then I know that this is uh, clockwise right there. So I think that was what it asked for. <clears throat> All right. But then it also asked for the velocity of C. So once you've got that, then you can find the velocity of C. How can you find the velocity of C? Well, the only equation that we know how to use, V equals R omega, uh, but this R is the distance from the instantaneous center to point C. So I've got to figure out, those, those points show me where the uh, instantaneous center is, so how far is this from the instantaneous center? Well, if RB was 0.1538, and this distance right here is 0.125, then that distance right there, the difference in those 0.020288, <clears throat> and I know the omega is 2.6, VC 0.075 meters per second. I've got to give it a direction myself. Uh, it was to the left because it is underneath that instantaneous center right there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, now, you might have kind of seen that what, what's really happening here is these velocities kind of look like this. Um, and so you could draw those. You could look at those triangles and think about um, the, um, similar triangles to find the instantaneous, uh, to find the RA and RB. Or you can just give it a um, <clears throat> give it a uh, a third equation like I I like to do right here. So if they overlap, the instantaneous center is somewhere on that line. You've got to figure out some different equation. How about this? What what if the top plate would ask, was actually going to the right and the bottom plate was going to the right? What what if what if I knew this right here? Then I would draw these. Radial lines, they intersect everywhere. So I got, where is the instantaneous center? Well, in this case, the instantaneous center would not be in between the two. It would be up here somewhere. And so this would be, so this is a completely different problem. Just kind of seeing what, what would you do if you had this scenario. Um, and I want to find RA and want to find RB. What do you know about RA and RB? Let's say you do know this diameter, you know, is point three or something. Uh, so in this case, my third equation would not be RA plus RB is equal to 0.3, but what would be RB minus RA is that dimension that you were given in the figure. So this is kind of a side note. If we had a different problem, then this would be my third equation 
in addition to the V equals R omega for A, V equals R omega for B. All right, so if they overlap, it's somewhere. You should know, you should know, okay, is it in, in, in between the two? Is it up here? Is it down here? Just from the directions of those velocities. And then you've you, you, you got to think about, think outside of the box, think of a third equation that you can use to solve for those unknowns.